Mara Menzies. And I'm John Mukeni Namari. We are both storytellers from Kenya. Together with the meteorologists, we travel to the climate front lines of northern Kenya to discover how people there are using indigenous knowledge to adapt to climate change. This podcast, Listening to the Rainmakers, shares what we learned on our journey. Episode 4, Climate is Security. National boundaries imposed by colonial rulers mean that the Turkana people and tribes related to them are spread across several countries. As cattle herders who need to move in search of pasture, they have traditionally welcomed each other in their territories with hospitality. But our fellow traveler Callistus, the meteorologist, discovered when he interviewed a West Pokot government official named Wilson that droughts caused by climate change are putting terrible strain on these cross-border relationships. So what happens now to the pastoralists move to another county? Now, now somebody, you cannot just sit somewhere where there is no life. So <laughs> the best thing is people seek where there is that, that resource, that natural resource, that's water and pasture. They move from West Pokot to Uganda. And remember, not in Uganda, Karamoja district, we have also Pokot living, so they can accommodate their brothers, you know. That's that really that brotherhood. So you don't just force your brother to get away when he has a problem. So you need to accommodate him after the after the drought. Then you say, but well, Dugian go back to where we come from. Uh, maybe this one leads to security and insecurity. Yes. There has been um, even at the local level. Yes. It, it seems uh, Climate change for ability and for ability is co- is mm-hmm. contributing to insecurity yes, in yes, the ground yes. because uh, uh, on the Turkana side we have issues on uh, Marquet. Marquet issues yeah. Uganda you have issues yes. is it true or what is your take on it? Um, both through all the places we have a problem. You know you cannot just go to somebody's place and then seek refuge, take the resources they have, deplete the resources they have without a coral. Somebody might coral. In Uganda, for example, we haven't heard of any corals of yet, but last year, a scopole uh, emerged that uh, we have a border of uh, Moroto Hills, where we have a court, try to push them almost beyond their boundaries that they were given. So you, the, if you go to Turkana, that is obvious. You know, Turkanas and us, we have a very bad blood. And even if they accept, they accept for a few days. And remember, the the the, the river, the Takwell River, okay, goes, it has a lot of pasture within the, 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 the riparian area of that particular river. A lot of grass. Eh? So we need to compete with them. We need to go and visit them. Please help us when you have a problem. But they can accept for a few days or a few weeks and then they just start a field so that's a problem another thing for the other side of market we don't have any problem issues of pasture or issues of um, uh, natural resource conflict no it is just that's a human conflict that's a really problem there but not because of animals no okay. yes we saw that there are very interesting cultural initiatives in the region which are trying to mitigate these security issues. We participated in one in Lokiriyama called the Peace Accord Festival. It started back in 1973 when people were starting to fight for pasture. The elders came and said, enough is enough. They buried their weapons. They exchanged gifts such as feathers to show their accord. Ever since then, the community marked this memory by coming back each year for a festival where they can talk and negotiate about new challenges such as those caused by climate change. They can celebrate, strengthen their relationships and it helps to bring peace in the area. Day three, Loima sub-county. I was awoken by uh, by the hooting of a car. I think uh, it had failed its alarm. And that was around 4.30 p.m. And also people, uh, noises of people preparing themselves and uh, 
we also had uh, the Ugandans, uh, soldiers who, sle- who came and slept, also pitched tent with us. We, I woke up uh, a bit early that day, uh, around uh, 7 a.m., and uh, we had our usual breakfast, chai and chapati and some bananas. And uh, also strategize again on how we will gather the stories. So we all went down to the Lokiriyama site and uh, people were streaming from different uh, hills and bushes and the place was packed, lively music uh, being played from the different uh, corners you'll see the locals, the dancing group uh, dressed in uh, regalia and some of the girls had uh, smeared red clay on their faces and we could hear jingles from afar like the jingles is the instruments jingles like on the on the ankles it was quite interesting uh, celebration we got to to go to the site where they had buried the arrows the spears the weapons uh, the bows to signalize peace we got to interview Obed, he's one uh, uh, tourism uh, prospector who is, who is from Rwanda and is, he had come to scout on how he can uh, connect this uh, route. He came from Uganda and uh, he's uh, seeing lots of potential. So he operates a tour company whereby they assist people to like uh, come and uh, experience different cultures and uh, he mentioned that uh, this place offers interesting culture and also we interviewed one peace ambassador from another side of uh, Turkana and what I noted about him he's, uh, he was the only there were only two people in his community that went to education and he had to he had some really interesting personal stories that he had to like when they were given uh, a meal, he will eat and then go and queue, get another another portion of meal that he will take back home, trek for like six hours back home to give the family. And while he was trekking, there were, there were some wild fruits that they will eat and their, ma- their mother will prepare for them like uh, maize, boiled maize that they will carry, trekking for six hours going to school so the festival had uh, it was a big event like i'll say like um, how many like almost seven to seven hundred to a thousand people both county governments from uganda and uh, from kenya and also we had visitors from ethiopia they came and uh, we experienced the many dances and the singing so that's the, the key message is let us have development with peace there is no way you can have peace no there is no way you can have development without peace yeah message that's the key message sasa ningependa tu wimbo moja nyingine ya kumsifu mama na nataka wa mama wakuja hapa wakimsaidia kuimba so we really grasp how important arts and culture are in combating climate and conflict issues. Young musicians are using their performances at the Peace Accord Festival to spread message of peace, solidarity and development. The festival was a place of sharing stories and experimenting with new ideas for developing the region. But in the next episode, we hear how all these local solutions are struggling to keep pace with rampant climate change. Thanks to our project partners, Adverse Kamba and ICPAC, and the project funders, the British Council.